Hi guys, Will here. Thanks for joining this video. Now for this video, it's gonna be a little different than anything I've posted in a while, but there's something that's kind of new, that's kind of like a growing thing that's going on all around us, especially here in the city, that I think it might be nice to talk about and address. I'm talking about this. You, you I have, have every right to be here. Okay. Not if they don't want you here. They can't That's not true. Service. So what crime is I committed they, to be they, they, trespassed they, from a public here? I make six figures. How much do you make? You want to make you want you want to compare bank statements? Okay, shut up. Shut up. Shut up, please. Shut up. Last time. Here, Bruce, I'll carry it for you. The guy likes here, to choke look. women out who are being peaceful in hey, public. Don't walk up on me. Stop. I am walking up on you. I'm walking behind you. You're gonna do you're nothing. Scared, tough. Get your car I'm real tough on the women. You have to have that attitude. I don't have any attitude. You are. Yeah, everything was fine. And everything was fine. And you've come back inside. Why yeah, because I, I asked you to come over here. Remember, okay. I gestured for you. Touch me, sir. If you're not going to go through my security checkpoint, you need to leave the building. Sir, please don't touch me. Oh. Leave the building. Please don't touch me, Goodbye. sir. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Why I'm did you just put your hand? I'm not seeing any of you out there, and you, Flynn, Man. organizing with the cops to go out and... Sir, hold on. No cameras, no cameras, no cameras. Y'all gotta step me. out. Don't touch step me. Step out. Get out. Get Don't out. touch me, bro. Get out. I don't care about what just happened now? What 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 did I just what does what 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 what's this what what, what, what is what, this what, now? What, 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 what did you just do? What did you just do? What what did you just do? Okay, 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 okay. I understand. If you're seeing that type of content for the first time, you're probably like, what in the world did I just watch? That it was one of the weirdest way to conduct myself in public I've ever seen. But who are these people? These individuals are what society call First Amendment auditors. And you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, who even are these people? Like, what is it that they're doing? Why are they acting like this? Why are they recording people? Well, these, along with many questions, will be addressed in this video. But firstly, what exactly is a First Amendment audit? Well, this is a, a social movement that usually involves photography or filming from a public space, a government official in their line of duty, and or the police. Now, the intent of those that do so is they say that their goal is to keep those in a position of quote-unquote power accountable to ensure that their constitutional rights are being respected as citizens, which there's really nothing wrong with, but they tend to film or photograph in government buildings, post offices, um, access control points in sensitive areas, as well as record law enforcement, the police, or military personnel. Now, in itself, I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing that they're doing. I mean, we, we can all agree that it might be a little strange. It might be a little different. But, of course, all of us have the right to do what we want to do. If this is an activity that individuals want to engage in, though it might be strange to us, they have a right to do it. And you know what? Me, personally, I strongly support that. But... There's controversy that comes into specifically what these First Amendment auditors do, which we're going to explain. Typically, there's two type of controversies that come along with these quote unquote self-proclaimed civil rights leaders or activists or whatever they want to call themselves. One is their intent for these actions and how exactly they carry themselves. Now, their intent typically, let's just be honest, is for a monetary gain. They usually begin their videos by typically asking people to support their cause, to pay them money online. And typically when they're dis uh, confronted by their behavior, they usually like to begin by stating that this is their source of income. This is their work. And if they're paid to do something they have a passion for, and it has to do with something they feel strongly about, I'm all for it. But typically, they're either unemployed or don't really have any other forms of income, and they use that as a weapon. I make six figures. How much do you make? You want, me com you want, you want to compare bank statements? Okay, shut up. Shut up. Shut up, please. Shut up. The second way these First Amendment auditors create controversy is their conduct. Now, their conduct while performing this audit has also been a major controversy because they choose to never act in a civil manner or really show any respect to anyone who notices or responds to their audits. One of the things I absolutely despise about these First Amendment auditors is the way that they speak to people. They usually talk in an unnecessary or condescending way to police officers or government employees, city employees, referring to them as terms such as servants, tyrants, or even clowns. I mean, who talks to people like that? Who intentionally speaks to people in a negative way like that? Now, typically, they speak in a loud or an obnoxious manner, which 
typically includes profanity and insults. They'll insult people's appearance, their intelligence, their positions of employment uh, with the intent of getting a negative reaction. And while they engage in these audits, typically they commit a numerous number of crimes themselves, thus causing them to be trespassed, legally detained, or even arrested, thus giving them a fitting title called frauditors. So let's now take a moment and discuss the legality of these First Amendment auditors, or frauditors, as we're going to call them the rest of this video. Let's first discuss accurately what crimes these auditors are committing, and let's back it up. So here's the big question about all this. The question is, can an individual waive their rights under the Constitution when committing a crime? And the answer, simply put, is yes. The Supreme Court has ruled that an individual engaging in a constitutionally protected activity can forfeit their rights by engaging in conduct not befitting the rights that they have been given under the Constitution. Now, we're going to back this up by looking at case law or state statutes. So this isn't just going to be some guy on the Internet's opinion. This is actually going to be what the law actually says, which is something that these frauditors typically try to avoid. They think that the Constitution is a blanket. Well, it's not, unfortunately. You know, one might assume that. But when you actually look at case law, especially in this case, we see how the Supreme Court has actually ruled in the past about an individual waiving their constitutional rights. Now, this case, the Supreme court um, in Illinois versus Allen from the year 1970. Now, I understand that the print is very small, so you may want to pause the video if you want to read it fully. But in essence, the Supreme Court held that with repeated warning from the judge presiding in this criminal case as mentioned here, the defendant waived his right to demonstrate his Sixth Amendment right to be present for his trial in certain points because the defendant was engaging in disruptive and dismissive and disorderly behavior. And according to the Supreme Court, this was not a waiving or, or, or a waiving of the individual's rights. This was not unconstitutional, despite the fact that he was removed from his Sixth Amendment right at the time. And there's other case law that indicates that the Supreme Court rules that an individual, by means of their conduct, can waive the rights that the Constitution grants them. So my reasoning on this is while these frauditors have the right to engage in these audits and record people in public buildings and in people in the public, because they choose to engage themselves in a combative, disruptive, and disparaging way, the police, who typically are called, and business owners are in the right to ask these engagers to stop engaging in this constitutionally protective act of free press and leave the premises or stop recording. Now I'm gonna take a moment and discuss three statutes in particular that these frauditors blatantly disregard when performing these audits. Now, for me personally, um, I'm going to use Pennsylvania state statutes because that's where I live. Now, I know these frauditors, if any of them see this video and get angry, they're gonna say, oh, oh, what's your address? What's your social security number so I can put it online and blah, 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 that's BS. But we're gonna discuss three specific Pennsylvania state statutes that they disregard. Number one, Title 18, Statute 2709, under harassment. And the statute clearly states that harassment takes place when one has the intent to harass or annoy any individual in the public or follows another person in or about a public place or conducts themselves with no legitimate purpose or in an anonymous matter. These are the steps that an individual that is conducting an audit, when they engage in these type of activities, this is harassment. And this is probably one of the more nauseating things these frauditors do. They follow people around, clearly trying to harass them, clearly trying to get a reaction from them, following them from people trying to dismiss themselves from certain situations. And the worst part is they never identify who they are or what they're doing when they're entering a building. They say, oh, I don't need to tell you my name. I don't need to tell you what I'm doing, which covers the anonymous portion of the statute and raises many security issues as well as serves a harassment when they persist in following or engaging in disruptive behavior with employees or not saying what they're doing to people that have the right to know what they're doing in the building. It's unnecessary, but a common ploy that these frauditors use to create content for their viewers. The second statute we're going to discuss is Title 18, Statute 5503, under disorderly conduct. Now, again, I can't make it any bigger, forgive me, but if you want to pause the screen to verify what I'm saying is true, you can. But in essence, the statute is saying one 
engages in disorderly conduct with the intent to cause public inconvenience, annoyance, or engages in threatening behavior, makes unreasonable noise, which serves no legitimate purpose to the actor when located in any place or business or any premises that are open to the public. Now, public inconvenience is the most common um, amongst uh, those in, uh, demonstrating disorderly conduct because employees have, have to cease working or, or try to reason with these frauders and police officers who have real criminals to try and detain have to waste their time with people like these guys with their mumbo jumbo. People have to wait in line. They have to wait for them to leave or take their business elsewhere in order to try and get out of the way of these First Amendment auditors. And this absolutely can be threatening with individuals when they're in fact, one, again, refusing to say who they are, but then they still persist to stick their cell phones in people's faces and say, I'm doing this because I can. Now tell me how that's not intimidation. And one of the most disgusting things that fraud auditors do is when they try to intimidate employees. Now, whenever they go into a, a public area, like a laundromat or a post office, they always like creating a lot of noise, which in the statute is a part of disorderly conduct. If you're creating unreasonable noise, creating a scene, that is disorderly conduct. But especially when they begin threatening public employees, saying, I'll post your, your salary, I'll post your information, I'll do this and that. Like, all of these different things add up to the statute of disorderly conduct. And honestly, this is notorious for these frauditors. The third and final statute is under Title 34, Statute 904, Threatening or Interfering with a Police Officer. Now, this is being mentioned because nine times out of ten, the police will be called because there is no reasoning with these frauditors at all. And at times, that is the only way to get them removed from the premises, to get them trespassed, to get them uh, detained, sometimes even arrested. Because sometimes these frauders will even say, hey, arrest me. It's for the sake of the Constitution. Now, the issue is when the police are called, there are times where they continue to be disruptive and disregard any this direction that they're being given. And they will refuse to identify who they are or give any identification saying, we don't have to. Well, yes, my friend, you do, because the statute clearly states that when an officer is performing any duties, it is unlawful for any person to interfere with or resist the police officer. And what's mentioned is refusal to provide an ID when the officer has the duty to investigate a matter commits a felony in the second degree. Now, here's why this is applicable. Many of these videos with these frauditors... Um, they're filming a police officers doing their jobs. Now, when preparing this video that you're watching right now, I heard this. No, that's not a lawful order. Turner versus Driver gives me authority. Y'all have to understand that. Y'all cannot turn. Y'all cannot turn a First Amendment protected activity into a crime. Actually, they can, because when you read Turner v. Driver, it clearly states that while, yes, there is a firmament right, a First Amendment right to record the police, that's protected, but it is subject to reasonable time, reasonable matter, and place restrictions. So if the frauditor is legit recording an officer while engaging in a traffic stop, a, a car accident, or searching a person of suspicion, or anything of that nature... How is that considered to be a reasonable time or a reasonable nature to engage with them? So clearly, this is an inaccurate reasoning. Another reason why this is applicable is when these frauditors refuse to identify. As the statute clearly states that they do not have the right to obstruct or object to the officer's ability to identify them as they are there to investigate why they're on the premise or why they're in a building. It is the officer's responsibility to find out, one, who the individual is, two, what the individual is doing, three, are there any outstanding warrants out for that individual, and four, what their purpose is by engaging in an establishment while engaging in, specific, in suspicious activity. That is the right of the business owner to request the police to do that. So, unfortunately for the frauditors, and fortunate for us that are not so for this protected activity, as they like to say, those that choose not to comply with the police's lawful orders, this will happen. Break and entry! No! Don't break my window! 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 Break and entry! Break and entry! Break the auto! Break the auto! Open it up now! Break the auto!
I hope you guys enjoyed that young lady. I mean, I mean, man, um, <laughs> demonstrating his First Amendment rights. But that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for your support. I could go into greater detail, but this video took long enough to put together. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section saying that you want a part two. If you want a part two, you'll get one. But until then, until next time.